Hey guys, it's Val. So before we get started with part three of the sped we made, I kind of want to hit you with a summary of the people that we know so far in the story. There just seems to be so much information coming from left and right. So I decided to actually kind of jot out some notes to keep it all straight in my head. And I thought, you know what? It might help you too. So the guests that we've got so far, we've got Mr. Paul Morgan, which he was originally known as Mr. Spade, staying in room 505. We cleaned that room and there was a bunch of film in there and a really weird like serial killer uh, map where we were basically looking at them being tracked, Marcel and Hector being tracked uh, by Mr. Paul Morgan. And then you've got Marcel and Hector Cruz, of course. When we cleaned their room, we got a weird phone call from a male who was breathing. He's been sleeping on the couch and he had a strange man back home that was looking for him, uh, so his mother said. And he has something with meetings with someone named SW. And then there was also that weird entry in his little planner that said attempt number 12 with rose petals on bed. And then you've got Marcella Cruz. She's possibly taking birth control and using lice oil, which is some kind of like astringent or something to clean, uh, you know, the lady parts. And then she had a privacy breach September 15th, 1957. All of her money was emptied from all of her accounts. And then she's been writing secret code notes with Mrs. Beaumont about a plan, something about they have a plan together. Uh, we have not cleaned Mrs. Beaumont's room. Um, I thought we did. I thought that was the first room that we cleaned, but when I looked at the log, uh, 504, the first room that we cleaned belonged to somebody named Wellington. Wellington does have a child that stays in that room. It's not listed in the log though, but they have letters of owing money to people, and then they have letters addressed to a Mapleson family, but that's not the name of the resident that's staying there. So that's kind of weird. I think what we need to do at this time is we need to search room 507, which is Mrs. Beaumont's room. And then we also need to search, we really should search room 508. That was the room that Linda and Bernard were in. But it's weird because in the log, it doesn't say that that room was like vacant or whatever. It says that it's rented to someone named Ziegler. So I'm not really sure how Ziegler ties into this. But yeah, maybe there's some clues left behind. I don't know. Maybe Linda and Bernard just went into like a room that they knew the person was gone or something. I, I really don't know. So we know that at 9.55 a.m., when we had just got done cleaning our first room, we heard a really loud thud. Looking back on it, it kind of sounded like a body uh, hitting the floor, to be honest. So we heard that at 9.55, we saw the clock. And then at 10 a.m. is when Mr. Morgan left. And then Marcella was just a few minutes behind him. And for the staff, you've got Bernard, who's married to Linda, pissed off Eugene for telling Mr. Weston that basically he's against the mental hospital being built, and he adores Wendy. Well, Linda, there was that note found that was hinting that she was in an affair with someone named B. She hates Wendy and she pushed to have her fired in the last episode. I'm not sure if that was like legitly Wendy like writing all that. It probably wasn't. Linda kind of seems like a sneaky bitch. And Linda also was kind of overkill when she warned Jacques about Wendy's overreacting behavior. I don't know, it seems like Linda's kind of a little crazy, not Wendy. So Wendy, she's a maid or a clerk possibly, she's engaged to Jacques, and she was crying about something in the bathroom. She totally didn't seem to have any idea about the note that was written on her on Linda's door, so I have a feeling she maybe doesn't have anything to do with it. These things are never like they seem, right? They look so obviously like they're this, this, and this, but it's, it's never as it seems, you know? Then you've got Eugene, who's like the handyman of the hotel. His daughter, we found out, has some mental health issues, so he really wanted that mental hospital to be built next door to the hotel. So he's pissed off at Bernard. We did clean up the mess, but we did leave the note behind. Carol, she's a new hire. She's only been there for one to two weeks. And Yvette and Susan, they're maids too, and they're gossipy bitches. There's really nothing 
to say about them. Andrew, or I think he gets called Archie sometimes. Anyways, nothing to report about him, really. And then Beth, the clerk, nothing to report about her except she's badass and she's our friend and we're kind of like talking to her about all the stuff that we've been finding and she's kind of like given, given us some ideas of things to try and also she's helped us a few times like when she showed us the log. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited to get back to it. Uh, we've got a lot to do and we're only about halfway done with this game. So yeah, let's go. Looks like I'm headed to room 507. No, no we're not. We're gonna check out this room. This is the room that Linda and Mr. Bernard were in. <gasps> okay, what is this? Just some trash. There's something in here, I know it, besides the lingerie. Coffee cups with wine. I can throw it away though. They're dirty. Let's take them. Oh, we we cleaned the um the lingerie, the hell? We we just took it. What is this? Say no to divorce. It's one of those damn things again. Wait. Rose petals on bed? That was, that was in uh, Hector's, what? That was in Hector's freaking um, planner. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Okay. Another one of these damn things. Linda, if you don't stop dirtying up my damn frickin' floor. Another day, another dirty dish to pick up. Oh, it put both of them in there. Okay. So we need to go to 507. Just turn it. They'd never know. Oh, Mrs. Beaumont. Beaumont, however you say your damn name. Okay, we can't even mess with the the safe there. Let's be quick. We don't know when she'll come in here. What is that? What is that? Looks like someone grew tired of looking at your face, Mr. Beaumont. Oh, doggy's cute though. And rings. Okay. Hmm. A lovely shade of lipstick. Interesting. Let's clean the mirror. I have no reflection. Let's see this. Oh, but outright threatening you. Oh, I hope you can stay as far away from him as possible. I just met with your damn lawyer. You've got some balls to accuse me of all that, as if you were so irreproachable yourself. Do you think I don't know where you spend your nights? But worst of all is that you won't let me see my son. You won't even tell me where he is. If you think you have a chance to get a custody, you really don't know me well. I won't let you take Michael away from me. Okay. What is this? Some matches? The White Cat Bar and Restaurant. Oh, that's cute. Little toy. I could throw it away. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not an asshole. Alright, it looks good. Uh, yeah. What is that down there? Can't see it. Mr. Cruz, huh? Numbers, dates, times. What does it all mean? I think that might be important. 
Oh my gosh, is Miss Miss Beaumont gonna like get Hector to kill Mr. Beaumont? <laughs> Light the house on fire so she can collect some money. So we've got two different lipstick shades. And some cigarettes. Alright, nothing out of the ordinary there. Frosted pops. Um The fastest way on rails through the Midwest. So you were eager to set up a meeting, but didn't want anyone noticing. Hmm. I hope you are well in spite of the circumstances. We've been on the train for two days now. It's a long ride, made even longer by the fact I cannot wait to see you again. We are scheduled to arrive in Montreal on the eve of Valentine's Day. I booked room 509. It's a marital suite. When we arrive, please refrain from talking to me until we can figure out a safe way to see each other. Say hello to Michael for me. M. And it's addressed to Mrs. Beaumont. Why does Michael have that in his fort? <laughs> Missing some crowns. Got a toy car, keep battery out. Oh, Michael, adults can be so confusing. I promise it's not you. Papa, I'm sorry, but mom asked me not to tell you the name of our hotel. She allowed me to talk about our room, though. We have two little beds, a radio, and even a television. Mom let me build a fort, and the maid brought us extra blankets. She's really nice. The hotel is nice, too, but I miss home. I wish mom and you could be happy, and I wish everything could go back to the way it was before. But mom says it's impossible. She says she no longer loves you. Do you think she'll ever stop loving me, too, Michael? Oh, that's sad. No. Unless she's a psycho. Oh, it's a poem. The winds and the leaves that day made a sound that sounded like... A sound that sounded like... Really, Anne? The winds and the leaves that, that day made the tree whistle a soft melody that came to my ear. I remember every part of this day, for it was the day we met. Jesus, this is bad. I was looking for my cat when I heard the sound of the leaves blowing in the wind, like a melody to my ear, on this summer day where I met you. Is she in love with Marcella? Is there trash back there? What is that? What the hell is this? Some chain letter. I'm not reading that. <laughs> Those few coins in my tip jar were getting pretty lonely. That oh, I just stole that. Your eyes. What does it mean? And who is this from? You don't need to know my name, but you've seen me. I've recognized that look in your eyes when you checked in. You and I don't need to make a fuss out of this. You keep your wits about you and I'll do the same. It's on the back of the Clarington Hotel. Who recognized Mrs. Beaumont? Ah, oh, that's so sweet. I didn't do much, but I'm glad it meant something to you. Dear Sophie, thank you so much for taking care of our room every day and bringing us extra sheets. Michael and I wanted to give you a little something before we left. Sincerely, A. Okay, well, I hope she doesn't mind me being nosy. Funny how what some games really stand the test of time. Shoots and ladders. I used to play this with mom Snakes all and ladders. The time. Aha! Keys are Snoop's best friend. A key? For what? Sounds like this is from your school days, but the name of the sender is smudged. Dear Anne, you were right. I miss the snow already. It's so hot right now in Texas. It's quite a shock after the cool weather of Montreal. My family has never seen snow before and I could not find the words to tell them how beautiful it is. They don't understand what they are missing. I wish I could build my brothers a snowman like the one we built together a few weeks ago. I know it's childish, but I had not had that much fun in years. Christmas was exhausting. Nine days of eating, singing, dancing. It's great fun, but I am glad it's over so I can rest a little. Of course, celebrations will Zoom for New Year, but it gives me a few days to relax. How are things going with your family? I know you don't get along well, but I hope you are still able to have a good time. I will leave for Montreal on the 8th. I cannot wait to be back. I miss finding black cat hairs all over my clothes. I miss our late night studying sessions at Harry's. I even miss Sister Miller's classes, if you can believe it. I will see you soon. Warm wishes. And it looks like that's the start of an M and there's an L, so I'm assuming it says Marcella. What's this? Greta. Oh, it must be the the dog's name from the photo. Adam or Eve? 
it looks like that meme where the guy is like walking with a girl and he like looks back at the one you know which one I'm talking about. Should Rose stay in a marriage that no longer makes her happy or seek refuge in the arms of the woman who truly understands her? She has tasted the forbidden fruit years ago and now she is all she can think of. But what will her family and society as a whole think of her if she turns to a life of sin? Oh. This is the same author as and then and they were roommates and the lonely girl. So and then and they were roommates was, I thought it was in Mr. Morgan's room. Interesting. Um, am I missing a fucking key? Uh, I'll need another key to unlock this. Haven't I seen one just like this somewhere? I, I don't know, have I? Two very boring minutes later. Oh. Ah, there you are. With Marcella. God knows if you put where those two is. keys together, it makes a heart. They are definitely in love with each other. Clarington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. Hey Beth. Bean, oh, that was weird. I've been meaning to speak with you. Oh, about what? Well, a little birdie told me Mr. Morgan and Mr. Cruz had an argument yesterday evening. Really? Who's your little birdie? Jacques. Apparently it got so heated he had to get involved. And listen to this. It sounds like we were on the right track. Cause he heard a particular word thrown around quite a lot. Wanna guess what it is? Affair? Affair. Bingo. Hmm. Did Jacques hear anything else? From what he told me. It seemed like Mr. Cruz was accusing Mr. Morgan of having an affair with his wife. Wouldn't have expected Mrs. Cruz to fall for a man like Morgan, but I guess the heart wants what the heart wants. Maybe, but that doesn't explain Mrs. Beaumont's involvement with Mrs. Cruz. What do you mean? I found a chest in room 507. I think it can only be opened by turning two keys at once. I found one of them in Mrs. Beaumont's things. Oh, and the other one? Well, I remembered seeing a similar key in one of Mr. Morgan's stocking pictures, so I went back to check. Mrs. Cruz wears it as a pendant. It looks identical to Mrs. Beaumont's key. Yep. Wait, so Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz own identical keys that are both needed to open a mysterious chest? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. Yeah, but the answers probably lie in that chest, and I don't think I'll be able to open it. I've looked around room 509. I would have seen the second key if it was there. Mrs. Cruz must have left with it this morning. Hmm, yeah. We were so close. I can't believe it all ends here. Well, hold on. I may have an idea. Get me a candle and some plaster, and maybe I can do something about that pesky chest. Oh. How? I'll tell you later. Just find me those things, and I'll meet you in the basement as soon as I manage to leave my post. All right. Oh, sneaky, Thank sneaky. Thank you for not giving up. Come on, you know I wouldn't let you down. You're the best, Beth. Okay, uh, yeah, so let's close this. You know what? I need to put towels in Mrs. Beaumont's room. I'm sure I'll find more laundry to add to the pile. Let's get to... I got these cups that are dirty. Okay. Aster and candles. What's in here? Just paint and stuff. Is that plaster? This takes care of half of this little scavenger hunt. Blocking the stairs seems dangerous. What if the elevator breaks down again? Where the hell am I going to find candles? I can probably find the rest of what I need in the basement. Oh. Okay. It's just another one of those. Damn it, Linda. We also have our tip money. We should probably put in our locker. Where was our locker? It was in here, wasn't it? Something like that. He's worth 
with us for years. He's always been loyal. Is there, is there anything you might have said or done to anger him? Admit it. That I deserve this? No, no, of course not. All I need to say is that maybe from his perspective, well, uh, oh, never mind. What are you going to do now? I'll fire him. What else? Oh, well, Eugene's fired. What on earth is going on Sophie. That's mine. All right, we're getting somewhere. You put money in your tip jar no, so you can go to Paris one day. To spend it on a burger at Harry's. Okay. What is that? I've never saw that before. Tossed aside by your best friend like that? Oh, Wendy. That's a special brand of heartbreak. Let's throw it away. Oh, that might have been what she was crying about. Oh, should, should, should we get my keys and put the other ones back? Where the hell were those keys? Yes, we remembered! The fucking breaker is open too. Hold yes. on to these tight. Okay, I got my keys. The master key is back. In the laundry room, maybe? Ooh, is this a, a movie script? What is this? Paper note with funny drawing, red lipstick. Huh. Mr. VIP is really getting to Bobby. Rebecca, I confess, I'm about to commit murder. I don't care who he is, how rich he is, how famous he is. The VIP guest in room 602 is a goddamn psycho. He ordered room service this morning, but somehow the plates got mixed up and we received eggs instead of pancakes. It happens, right? Well, the man rushed to the kitchen in a frenzy and yelled at us for 10 minutes straight, saying eggs are disgusting and he hates them. I should have told him he's disgusting and I hate him. I thought of spitting in his next meal, but before leaving, he swore he'd never order anything from our kitchen ever again. Without the shadow of a doubt, this is the worst establishment I have ever visited, he said in his pompous accent. If he ever sends his clothes downstairs to be cleaned, can you be a good friend and stitch all of his pockets? <laughs> Any other form of sabotage would do too. I know you're creative. Just be careful not to arouse too much suspicion, Bobby. Candles, candles, candles. I think Rebecca keeps a stash of them, but where? In her locker? Does she have some in her locker? What the hell is that? A few moments later. Here's Beth's locker. She's got some candles in here. Hmm. Didn't I find one of these in Anne's room too? The white cat must be a popular spot. Maybe it's a gay bar? Are you looking to buy land? I know you grew up on a farm. Maybe you're looking to get back to nature. Hmm. Wait, is this you, Beth? What on earth led to this picture being taken? Don't see any damn candles. So you do have a stash of candles. But where is it? Rebecca, the kitchen is out of power again. And I can barely see a thing. Bernard wants us to continue working, but I'm not risking chopping off my fingers for that blowhard. Didn't you start hoarding candles since the last power outage? I remember you saying you never wanted to be caught in the dark basement again. Where's your stash? It's urgent, please. Hold on, was it this? Is it this map? No candles, but this looks like the laundry room. Laundry room. That's where it is. That's where it is. Ha! Huh. Got a candle. Now, what next? Should I be opening all these too? No. We ain't got time for that. There, there you she are. Is. I'm not sure I understand what the plan is here. 
Well, she's when making I was a little, fake key. We had padlocks on many of the farm's sheds. My dad would always lose the keys, so one day he made a mold of them using wax and plaster. I was thinking of doing the same. Are you sure it's gonna work? Absolutely not. But hey, I guess we won't know until we try. Yeah, mm. you're right. So let's do this. Okay, to start, we need to pour the wax from the pot. Have you done this before? You're a real pro. Oh, thank you so much. Now, time. Let's give it a few seconds so the mold really takes form. Okay, I think you can remove it. Well, hey. we're almost there. Just pour the cup of plaster into the mold. All right. Now we wait for it to dry. How long do you think it's gonna take? I don't know. I guess we'll keep poking it every now and then. I bet you didn't think you'd be making a plaster key today, huh? <laughs> Indeed. But I like it. It's rare that this job allows me to use my creative side. Your creative side? Well, granted, this key won't end up in any museum, but... I enjoy the occasional artistic endeavor. Should I say that? Like yeah. posing with alligators? How do you know about that? Oh, um, I think it must have slipped out of your locker because I saw this picture of you in a long white dress and... Oh my, you did? What did you think of it? It was cool. I loved it, actually. It was unique, I guess. I got Artistic. a yeah. smooth Those smooth pictures were taken achiever. by a very close friend of mine a few years back. Ziva Rivers was her name. Earth-shattering talent, Rivers. but a bit too controversial for most people's sensibilities. <laughs> oh. Are you still friends? No. We... Uh, we went our separate ways. It's a shame. She... Uh, she really captured me. My essence. Your essence is to tame alligators? My essence is to fear nothing. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I can tell. I really admire that about you. I'm sure under that sweet exterior, you're pretty fearless too. Haven't you ever done something really scary? I mean, other than snooping on a potential creep. Um, does sailing count? Excuse me? You sail? On a boat? <laughs> I used to. With my grandpa. But when he died, we had to sell the boat to pay off oh, his Oh, that's the Ariane oh, legacy or whatever. I would have loved to go with you. That picture. That would have been great. You. I really miss it. I miss him, too. Even though he was a bit eccentric. More eccentric than me? Oh, <laughs> a lot more. I'm sure I would have loved him then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. I think it's dry. I can't believe it worked. I could not have done this without you. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> well, I should get back upstairs before Bernard notices my absence. If he hasn't already. Let me know how it goes with the key. Oh, and uh, be careful while turning it, okay? You wouldn't want it to break inside the lock. Yeah, I'll be careful. Oh. Thank you for everything. Jesus, no okay. Problem. Careful, Sophie. You don't want this key to break. Mm -mm. Hold on. Sh should I save? I'm scared. Okay, I did save it. I'm not. I didn't want to fuck anything up. Oh, I did it. Okay. It did make a heart. That's cute. Unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Her alliterative name will surely take you back. These two sure love their riddles. A riddle. 
I think I know part of that. I hope you get better. Try to rest today. I will bring you hot soup after class. Huh. Marcella invited you to the movies. Let me guess. You said yes. I can barely listen to Sister Miller's lecture today in secret language. All I do is look at your lips and imagine kissing you. I can't wait for tonight. Wow, yeah. Dear Anne, I have just heard Doris say on the radio and it made me think of you. I know how much you love Sentimental Journey, counting every mile of railroad track that takes me back. Last time I was in Texas, it felt like coming home. Now, strangely, I feel away from home. I wish you were here with me. I always feel at home in your arms. I can hardly believe it has been five weeks since we last saw each other. Sometimes I wonder if I might be going crazy. You are always in my head. Everything reminds me of you. Not only songs on the radio, but silly things like the flowers in our garden that smell of your shampoo. Or when people say the word darling and I can hear you say it with your lovely French accent. My family seems to have noticed my odd behavior, but of course I cannot tell them about you, even though I wish I could. I feel like climbing on the roof of the tallest building in Austin and shouting my feelings for you at the top of my lungs. God, I sound like a giddy teenager in love for the very first time. Maybe I am. Sometimes I am scared that all this time with you was nothing but a dream. A dream too good to be true. I am afraid that when I return to Montreal, I will realize you never existed. Or if you do exist, you don't remember me. I wish I had a picture of the two of us so I would know for sure it was real. I long for your embrace and the taste of your sweet lips. I love you. There's their picture. Dear Anne, I am sorry it took me so long to answer your last letter. Has it been six months already since I left Montreal? As you always say, la temps passe si vite. I don't know. My parents are glad I am done with my studies. They always thought it was a strange idea for me to go to university. Now they want me to find a husband and have children like any other woman. I think I will. These past few months, I had a lot of time to reflect on our relationship. You know my feelings for you, and I hope you never forget how much I love you. But we cannot hide our heads in the same any longer. We were lucky our story lasted as long as it did and foolish to think it would last forever. Our love is forbidden and hiding it from my family is proving more and more difficult every day. You will always have a special place in my heart, but I believe it is time for us to go our separate ways. You made me feel like a teenager. You made everything but the present disappear. Now I need to be an adult and think about the future. Sincerely, M. A few moments later. Doris Day. That's an alliteration, isn't it? Doris, I S. Oh, okay. And that's right. That's that's gotta be it, right? That's gotta be it. And it's it's giving me a prompt to enter selection mode. A cat named Greta. I was thinking it was the G dog R. from the picture. Okay, so yeah, that's gotta be it. G R I S. Let's go try it. Let's go try it. G R I S. Here we go. What the hell's in here? You solved Anne's riddle and opened the case in room 509. A typewriter. That novelist, Bridget Boswell, is actually you, Marcella? The one that wrote all those books? You know I prefer a good old crime story, but last week I came upon a romance novel with an intriguing title, and they were roommates. I bought it on an impulse at a train station and read it from cover to cover during the journey. Can you imagine my surprise when I recognized our story? You may have changed the names and locations, but all of our moments are there. Our endless discussions in the dorm room, our first date at the theater, our trip to Quebec City. You often said writers or thieves, but I never fully understood until now. It has been almost 10 years since I received your last letter. The letter that painted our relationship as nothing more than a summer fling. At first, I could not believe you had written those words. Then I waited in vain for your answer and had to accept your love for me had never been real. For many years, I was brokenhearted, angry, confused. I questioned the nature of our feelings, of our attraction, and made many wrong decisions. But this book, your book, am I foolish to think it's proof you really loved me? In any case, I hope you are well and I am happy to see you accomplish your dream of becoming a writer. And Oh, Anne. Murder might be a bit much, but you deserve some kind of justice. 
Dear Marcella, I didn't expect you to reply to my letter, but I am happy to see I was wrong. Your words have comforted me in a time of great distress. If only Louis was half the man you say Hector is. He has quite a temper and hits me frequently. I am willing to put up with it as long as he doesn't hurt Michael. But there are some days when it becomes almost unbearable. The other day I dreamt of our first date. We were watching The Postman only ring twice again. But suddenly we were in the movie. You were Lana Turner and I was Josh Garfield and we were both plotting to kill my husband. I hate to admit it, but I almost hope it was premonitory. To answer your question, I do still have our box. My brother is currently in Atlanta for work and I was thinking of going to see him with Michael next month. If you are able to meet me there, we could open the box together and laugh at all the silly things we thought were important all those years ago. I hope to hear from you soon. Anne. P.S. Do you still remember that secret language we invented so Sister Miller couldn't understand the notes we passed during her class? I still do. Oh, so... You came to Montreal under the pretense of celebrating your wedding anniversary, but all along, you meant to reunite with Anne. Dear Marcella, I left the house, I left Louis, I couldn't take it anymore, I couldn't lie anymore. How do you do it? How do you manage to live a double life, to hide your work and your novels from your husband? I had so much less to hide, and yet, Michael and I are staying at the Clarington Hotel until we can find a place to stay and the divorce is done. I don't know how long it will take. Could you come and see me in Montreal? I really need you by my side right now. And P.S. I wouldn't put it past Louis to scour every hotel guestbook in the region looking for me under his surname, so I've registered it under the name Beaumont. After all this, turns out you're a fan of Bridget? Of Marcella? That's a lot sweeter than I expected. Dear Marcella, although you don't know me, I think I can safely say I'm your biggest fan. Your novels have literally changed my life. After the war, I spent almost 10 years in a psychiatric hospital because of panic attacks. <gasps> This is Paul Morgan! None of the treatments were working and I wasn't getting any better. I became friends with one of the nurses who started lending me books so I could pass the time. I didn't really like the first ones, but then I picked up Bridget Boswell's first novel, your novel. I had never read such a beautiful love story. It almost brought tears to my eyes. I immediately urged the nurse to get me more of your books. Believe it or not, the more I read them, the less panic attacks I had. The doctors thought it was their new med medication finally working, but I knew the truth. Your novels gave me the courage to get in contact Contact with Lindsay, a friend from the war. I had always felt for him the same way your characters feel for each other, but I had never dared telling him. Now I have, thanks to you. The thought of seeing him again is what motivated me to get better and leave the hospital. I hope to hear back from him soon. After my discharge, I wanted to thank you for everything you've done for me. I've discovered Bridget was a pseudonym, so tracking you down took longer than I thought. Fortunately, I am very patient and resourceful man, and I never give up. Do you think we could meet? I have so much more to tell you. An advance on my salary. So Marcella hired you. But what for? Dear Marcella, I've just received a letter from Lindsay's mother. She tells me he's dead. Words cannot even begin to describe how empty I feel. He died two years ago, before I even sent my first letter. He will never know my feelings for him, and I will never know if he could have loved me back. I guess I should have known this would end in pain, just like your novels. I wish I had Lindsay's ability to find beauty everywhere. During the war, amidst the death and chaos, he would marvel at the forests of Germany, at the sun, the birds. He loved birds so much, he could identify them just by listening to their song. I I have to admit, your proposition took me by surprise. I was hesitant to leave home at first. I was afraid to miss Lindsay's answer, but now there's nothing keeping me here. I'm desperate for anything that will help me forget the pain, but I don't have enough money to make it to Texas. Do you think you could give me an advance on my salary? In spite of everything, I'm really excited to know I'll finally meet you, Paul. Interesting. So, let me get this straight. Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz are some kind of star-crossed lovers? Seems like it, yeah. But I'm not sure whether they chose to meet here just to reconnect for a few days, or if there's something more to it. Well, I may be able to help with that. Really? How? Oh, some mail arrived earlier for Mrs. Beaumont. Hmm. I wonder what's in it. We could open it. I mean, that's that is illegal. illegal. It's very oh. much so. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Well, too late. I've always known I would end up in prison one day. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> so? It's three train tickets. And, uh, oh, there's a tourism pamphlet for California. California? Well, it makes sense. It's much more progressive there. They're gonna run here. away. So, 
Anna and Marcella want to go there to live their love freely. Anna and Marcella, huh? You three are best pals now? Well, after reading so much of their correspondence, I kind of feel like I know them, you know? Yeah. But what about Mr. Morgan, though? I mean, Paul. How does he fit into all of this? I think Marcella hired him. I found some letters Paul wrote to her. He said that her proposition took him by surprise and that he'd need an advance on his salary. What did she hire him for? To investigate her own affair? No, there's I'm something. I'm not sure. I didn't find the letter he was replying to. And why did he have those pictures of you anyway? I guess we'll never know for sure, but I don't think it was ever about me. It's always been about Anne and Marcella. Exactly. Well, it feels hmm. a tad anticlimactic, but who needs drama, right? At least it made our day pretty interesting. <laughs> it sure did. You know, after today, I think I get why you're so interested in the lives our guests lead. I try to forget they exist as soon as I'm done interacting <laughs> with them. <laughs> For real. But once in a while, it's nice to remember that, well, even the most put-together person could be an absolute mess on the other side of the door. And who are you behind closed doors? No. You're right. I'm not flirting Everyone with you, to put on but... A show, but <laughs> None of us are actually perfect. Yeah, it's a comforting thought. I knew you'd get it, Bean. Come see me when your shift ends, all right? We could leave together if you want. Sure. If we're able to. With all that snow, I'm thinking maybe we'll have no choice but to spend the night here. Ooh, a sleepover. We could set up a pillow fort on the mezzanine. A pillow fort? We do work in a hotel, you know. There are actual beds here. I know, but isn't my way so much more fun? Well, we could take a page out of Michael's book and decorate it, and then spend the night throwing stuff at Bernard whenever he comes through the lobby. Oh, now you're talking. 